In today's video, we'll be focusing in on the concept of trend days, looking at the S&P 500 in particular. We had trend days this Thursday and Friday to close out the week, and I'd like to use the data points from those two trend days and run our moving average pullback back tester and get a general idea of how does the S&P tend to behave on trend days. Are there certain moving averages it likes more than others? Do we want wider stops or smaller stops when we try and play trend pullbacks? What is the general behavior personality of the S&P 500? Now, there's a few different things you'll need to follow along, especially if you'd like to run this test on other markets, and that's the moving average pullback back tester. It's a free download, I'll leave a link to it in the description box. Once you download the back tester, you need to import it into your Thinkorswim platform, and you should be good to then follow along with the remainder steps. Now, the parameters that I'm using for this back test, the market is the S&P 500 futures market, and that's the ES futures. I'm back testing over two different dates, the 21st and the 22nd of April, and that's Thursday and Friday. And I'm going to run this back test during regular market hours only, which means we need to add some code to our back tester that tells it to take trades only when the market is open and ignore extended hours so that that does not factor into the PL and muddy up some of our decisions. Here are the different tests that I'll be running. Each of these test scenarios is using a different target and stop ATR multiplier set. The first number is the target ATR multiplier we're going for, and the second number is the stop. So for example here, from our entry, we're looking to try and make two times the ATR from our entry, and our risk is one ATR. So here, the risk reward is skewed in our favor. The next trade scenario, we're risking one to make one. Two ATR target, two ATR stop, and then we gradually scale that up, so three and two, four and two, five and three, and then a five and four will be the last one where we've given this a wider stop. I'll be running this test scenario for all six of these uh, test cases for both pullbacks along with confirmations. So here's what that Excel sheet looks like before I continue forward. Just so you have an idea, so I've listed out the three different EMAs that I'll be testing, 8, 21, 34, pullback, confirmation, and then each of the ATR multiplier sets. And we're looking to optimize for PL. That's this column right here. So that's what we'll be filling out through this video, going through this step by step. I'll run this on the one minute time frame and show you how you can follow the same process to test other time frames if you have a different preference. Along with, you can repeat the same test on a whole different uh, stock or ETF or futures market altogether. Now, by the end of this exercise, I'm hoping that this back test or this experiment allows us to answer a few questions. The first is, which moving average offered the best pullback opportunities for day trading? And I've defined best by highest PL. So that's one question I'm curious about. Second one is, outside of just best, which offered the best balance between PL along with effort? That means where did we have to take fewer trades, require less focus? You could let the trade really write itself out. Was this where we gave it wider stops or was this where we tried to keep things a little narrow and take more trade opportunities? Which was better? Third is, which was better in terms of uh, wider or smaller stops? Should we have stuck with that three to four ATR stop where we give the trade some room? Or should we have used something more like a one to two ATR stop, cutting our losses very quickly while say maybe going for a stretch target? And then finally, was it better to blindly sell pullbacks? In this case, we're selling since this was a downtrend. Or was it better to wait for price action to confirm the trend before we actually took our entry? So these are the four questions I'm hoping we can answer. Again, you have the Excel sheet. We'll be filling that out step by step. But the first thing we need to do is add in our code to take the regular market hours only for our trades. So let's go ahead and start by doing that. Once you've imported the strategy into your platform, you can simply open up the code by heading over to the strategies tab. I'll pull up the moving average pullback back tester code. And now inside of this, I'm going to scroll towards, actually I'll leave this code towards the top. We'll add it even above the EMAs here. And this is where I'd like to specify which time period I'm looking to try and trade. So we'd like to narrow this down to regular trading hours only. And for that, I can say something like def market hours is equal to if seconds till time. So this means our seconds until this time arrives. And that's 930 all times using the seconds till time function are in Eastern Standard Time. So here we're looking to check if our seconds until this time are less than or equal to zero, meaning we are now at this time or beyond it. And we'd also like to check that our seconds 
until time for when the market closes, which is 1600 military time, 4 p.m. Eastern, is greater than zero, which means that we still have time until that bell rings. If this is true, then return one, else return zero. So using this one line, we've now specified take trades only during regular market hours. So let me show you what this looks like. Without applying it to our final conditions, I'll just leave this code only defined as of right now. I'll click OK. Let me add our pullback backtester to our chart now. So I'll add that in. And then if I come into something like say a one minute time frame chart here, what you should see is the backtester is taking a lot of trades in the extended hour session. We'd like to change that. So now we can take that market hours variable that we just created and we can tie that into the add order conditions for the open orders down here. So for example, ahead of long entries, I'll say market hours and long entries. We're adding that as one more Boolean condition along with market hours and short entries. Simply remove this if you'd like to change this and go back to having the back tester take entries even during extended hours. Now, once I click OK here, you'll see those trades disappear. Now I'm going to change our long entries to off and turn on our short entries here click apply and we can start to see some orders forming. Now we're going back two days so I'm going to change our time frame here from one minute one day to one minute two days and that now gives us the 21st which you can see right up here in the date the 21st along with the 22nd. Now let's start by running our first scenario and that's using the 8 EMA. We're looking for a pullback only, a 2 ATR target and a 1 ATR stop. Let me adjust the parameters, so coming into our studies menu here, I'm going to double click the moving average pullback back tester. We have our entry EMA at 8, so we know this is correct. Pullback only, 2 ATR target, 1 ATR stop multiplier, and since we're using the S&P 500 futures, I'll keep this number to a 1 so it's cleaner and easier to read. For our quantity, click OK, and that's now giving us the trade results for having followed an 8 EMA pullback, waiting for a pullback only and blindly entering at that pullback, going for a 2 ATR target and having a 1 ATR stop, our PL is 4,293.09 over the past two days. So let me write this out 4293.09. Now we come back in, we're changing one of the parameters, and we're increasing our stop here. We're going from a 2 ATR target to now a 2 ATR stop. That's the next test. Click apply. We can see this number changes to 6,483.58. So it increased. So a wider stop here helped improve the PL. Let's see what keeping that stop now at a 2 ATR stop, but going for a wider target looks like. So I come back in, adjust our target this time to a 3. Click apply. That's dropped the PL. So that didn't seem to really help this trade idea. Now what happens if we go even further than a three? So we try and go for a two reward for a one risk. That number did increase to 5118.88, but still less than that 6483 that we saw with the two and two. Now let's move on to five and three, and then we have a five and a four left. So five and three, apply. Ooh, that number's even higher, six one or 6817.20. And then finally, the last one is if we give this an even wider stop here, so a 4 ATR stop. That number jumps up to be the grand winner, at least from this series so far, which is 8689.33. Now you'll see I have another set where that's repeated, but this time we're changing our pullback to be confirmation mode. This is where we're waiting for price to close below the previous candle. So coming back inside of our settings here, I'll change this to confirmation, start back at the two and the one, click OK, click apply, and I'm going through this process once more. So now if we compare going through or waiting for a confirmation, excuse me, with that same two ATR re uh, reward, one ATR target, these two PLs are fairly close to one another, but going for that pullback only was a slightly better idea. What happens if we up this two and two? This drops fairly substantially compared to the 6,483. We're now at 3669.36. Now after that, we have a 3.2. Apply. So 3.2 is 3816.26. So here we're starting to see fewer and fewer PL numbers, but that may also be explained by having fewer trade opportunities by waiting 
to be more selective for that confirmation. So the next one, 3943.17. And now we're on the five ATR target, three ATR stop. That's six, five, six, six five six three point fourteen and then finally the last one which is seven thousand seven forty eight so from our uh, eight ATR pullback here if I expand this from our eight ATR pullback the highest number that we have on this list is our five ATR target our four ATR multiplier stop eight EMA pullback and we're looking for that pullback only that in this series has been the highest number. So let me go ahead and highlight that so we have that saved. Now that we've completed the 8 EMA set, we need to move on to the 21 EMA set. The process that you follow is the exact same. You should find it gets a lot quicker as you go down from 21 to 34, especially if you're testing different time frames. You may eventually not even have six different sets. So that's ways to try and speed this process up a bit. For the purposes of this video, let me go ahead and pause here, fill out the 21 and 34 on my own, and then I'll resume the video so we can analyze each one of these results and see what our end scenario was in terms of the S&P's behavior, at least off of the one minute time frame chart. So I'll go ahead and pause now, and then I will uh, show you the results when I have them. So here are the results that we have. I just finished the exercise. In the 8 EMA, the highest PNL was with the 8 EMA waiting for a pullback only, 5 ATR target, 4 ATR stop, the number there was 86.89. Now with our 21 EMA, very similar theme here, the highest number, 21 EMA, pullback only, 5 ATR target, 4 ATR stop, highest PL there, 88.91.61. So fairly comparable here to that 8 EMA pullback early on compared to using the 21. Now if you move on to the 34, again, a very similar theme here, 34 EMA, pullback only, 5 ATR target, 4 ATR stop. PL here a little bit lower than that 8 in the 21, 7370.74. So waiting for a deeper pullback was not as great of an idea versus being a bit more aggressive off of that one minute time frame chart. Using something like that 5 ATR target, wider stops here were better. So 4 ATR stop, um, wider targets as well, 5 ATR targets. So very interesting to see the same pattern in terms of which number is the highest PL across the board in this entire series. The same exact set 5-4 uh, on trend days. So now if we come back to our questions that we were looking to try and get answered here, let me come back to that. So which moving average offered the best pullback opportunities for day trading? Our answer there was 21. Which time frame offered the best? We didn't really look at multiple time frames here, but hopefully you have a good idea of how you can go about testing this for at least a PL. And for the effort, simply look at the number of trades it took to get there. So this question we have yet to still answer, but we know how we can go about answering it. Which resulted in a higher PL, wider or smaller stops? We know here, wider stops, that four ATR stop was very clearly the better parameter to have across the board when trying to participate in moving average pullbacks. And then finally, was it better to blindly sell pullbacks or wait for price to confirm? And in this case, we saw pullbacks only beat out that confirmation, especially when you went for a wider stop along with a wider target, that five ATR target, four ATR stop, pullbacks only across the board on that one minute time frame chart were the winners. So for those of you that do find this information or exercise interesting, the next step I would take is run something similar on whatever time frame you like to trade. See how those numbers compare to what we saw on the one minute time frame chart, which provided you a better return based off of your effort, which was more efficient. Those are some ways you can take this further. You could also try and test different uh, scenarios here. These are just numbers I chose to try and give us a baseline. You could try expanding this even more, maybe a six ATR target or a seven ATR target, or maybe you try contracting it a little bit smaller with your own custom variations that works for your risk profile. There's infinite ways you can run this test, but hopefully this gives you an idea of a good systematic uh, framework at least to try and follow. This is the series I used, repeated the same thing for each EMA across the time frame. And now if you were to run the three minute time frame, for example, you would copy paste this entire one, two, three, four columns and fill in the PL from scratch for that time frame. So it gives you a very nice way to compare across different time frames across different numbers and learn a little bit more in terms of the personality. 
Hopefully this gives you a nice breakdown of the trend days that we saw on Thursday and Friday in particular and gives you an idea of how at least playing those two trend days was beneficial. Hope this video was helpful and hope you all enjoy backtesting your own different scenarios for your own markets. Take care everyone and I'll see you in the next update.